Hello and welcome to News Click. We've had in the past few days a lot of controversy of senior army officers, Air Force and other defense services officers writing to the president saying that the way army is being politicized, the defense services are being politicized is wrong. The effort was led by three senior defense services of officers. One was Admiral Ramdas, other was Major General Bhumbhatkare, and we have with us Major Chaudhary, Priyadarshi Chaudhary, who has also been one of the people who has organized the signature campaigns. The whole th controversy started from the fact that two of the officers were alleged to have withdrawn their signatures, and this whole attempt by more than 150 officers written to the president, the whole effort was sought to be undermined by calling it fake news. Major Priyadarshi, how do you look at this attempt? Because ANI seems to have been at the center of this effort to delegitimize the entire signature campaign by saying that, hey, two officers have withdrawn, most of the signatures could be fake, and giving it the color of fake news. Yeah. I, um, we cannot fathom why ANI did what it did. The fact remains that uh, the veteran fraternity was extremely anguished about the sort of politicization that was being done uh, post Pulwama. It uh, started post Pulwama. Actually, it started in 2016 post the surgical strikes. But um, in the ongoing elections, Lok Sabha 2019, it started post Pulwama, then Balakot, and after that. So, after that, when Yogi Adityanath and uh, Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi started addressing rallies and addressed, them, uh, addressed the armed forces as saying that the Modi ki sena, that's the time when Admiral Ramdas wrote to the EC and complained. The EC issued an advisory to all political parties to desist. It also cautioned Yogi Adityanath to not do this, not again. To do this again. It did not stop there. It did not uh, stop. Uh, most BJP leaders continue to do it, including the Prime Minister. That's the time when we thought we must use the available institutional mechanism available to us and write to the Supreme Commander. In a President democracy, being the Supreme Commander yeah. of the Defence Force. Correct. So, uh, 156 officers, including eight chiefs, signed on the document. Former chiefs. Former chiefs. Endorsed the document uh, uh, by email and by, uh, on, primarily on emails. And we have kept the, we had kept the records. When I sent out the mail um, in the morning, I was surprised to find out that the defense minister had called us as fake and vested interests and whatnot. So I was extremely surprised. And then I realized that two of our chiefs had um, given public statements saying that they had not signed. Uh, they were General Rodriguez and Air Marshal Suri. So uh, if you look at my uh, tweet thread. Um, we didn't, uh, they, the chiefs took a stance and we respected their views, so we didn't counter them. I see that you have said that they are my senior officers. Yeah. If they have said it, for whatever may be the reason, I will not contest yeah. it. But there is a record yeah. on your computers yeah. that they had actually given their consent. They either forgot about it or had second thoughts. Or misunderstood the entire uh, exercise. exercise. That is also a possibility. There was immense pressure from on us from other officers who were saying that our credibility is being put on line by the Raksha Mantri and the ANI and uh, various news channels. So why aren't you releasing the proof? We held on to it as much as we thought it will die down. It did not. So effectively then we were forced to release the proofs. And this has been produced by Wire and News Central 24-7. Correct. Uh, General M. L. Naidu, uh, former vice chief, uh, was also in the news. If you see on that day, on twelfth morning, they were saying three senior officers have withdrawn. A. N. I. quoted General Naidu, uh, but General Naidu wrote back to us immediately with the videos and uh, documents, saying that I have not. I firmly endorsed the stand that has been taken by the veterans, and A. N. I. is misquoting me. So we released that proof also, which News Central carried. Uh, Wire went to the extent of sending somebody to examine our computers. And uh, taking out proof so Very that it, correct, which they did, and then Wire carried that story. <sighs> After that, uh, we waited for a few days, hoping that ANI would apologize or would retract the stories, which did not happen. Then we were uh, constrained uh, uh, and anguished enough to write to Thomson Reuters. We knew Thomson Reuters had uh, done a strategic investment in June 2018 uh, with ANI, holding 49% stake. So we wrote. 
to Thomson Reuters and ask them some pertinent questions. You basically ask them what is their stand on ANI's behavior in this case? Also editorial content, uh, did they do the, do the uh, due diligence, uh, all of that. There are four questions which is in the public domain which I have asked. I wrote, let me make this categorically clear, I wrote because I was anguished enough. It does not imply that all the 156 and subsequently 422 officers are there have signed on, have subscribed to my actions. Just hold on. Yeah. What you're saying is now from the 156 original signatories. That is to the president. That That's the president. Yeah. Now we have the, the total number is 422, 422 now. It's an ongoing campaign because the Rashtrapati Bhavan said that they've, uh, first they said they denied they have received anything but no mails had bounced. And when journalists kept on asking us, Rashtrapati Bhavan is denying this, we said it's an open letter. Anyway, we are sending physical copies, which we dispatched. Uh, the, we have delivery receipts from the India, India from India Post by Speed Post and Registered Post that they had received. So Telegraph spoke to the press secretary of Rashtrapati Bhavan and asked. So which he confirmed that he has received the letters, but they are not ink signed, which I find absolutely ridiculous in today's day and, and age. Till date, Rashtrapati Bhavan refuses to take cognizance of it, and the EC also. My question to the EC is, if you had issued a caution and an advisory and you cautioned Yogi Adityanath, what is stopping you from cautioning the Prime Minister or the anybody Prime else Minister. who is doing it? But coming back to the, the, the story about ANI a and, I and uh, Thomson Reuters, Thomson Reuters. Yeah. what is the Thomson Reuters position after you brought this out, particularly as they are a foreign entity and this is the yeah. Indian elections are going on and yeah. ANI's attempt should uh, appears to be a blatant uh, effort to shall we say, misguide the voters? I have written that very clearly, that the biased and malicious reporting that uh, ANI is doing is not only slander, but also tantamounts to perfidious reporting and with a view to influencing the ongoing elections. And I've asked Thomson Reuters categorically that as a listed entity of the US firm, you're bound by a certain code of conduct, code of ethics that are there. There is an ethics committee there. There is also the mission statement that is there that they do business in an ethical manner. We pointed those things out. So when I wrote to that and I asked for acknowledgement, um, Joel Ivoryhart, the company, one of the communications uh, person, wrote back to me saying that they've received the mail and they're processing it. I wrote back to them saying that, listen, we do not have the luxury of time. Uh, these are ongoing elections and ANI continues to do what it is doing and it is not healthy for us as a country or as a democracy. So they acknowledge that mail also and says they, they will process it in view of the second mail that I wrote back to them. One day after that, they wrote back to us saying that um, uh, they, we should contact ANI directly for resolution of this complaint. To which I replied back, are you washing your hands off this entire scheme of things? And of course, they have not replied. They have not back. replied back. You know, uh, Major Priyadarshi, we have had discussions about what's happening in the country earlier as well as news click with you. Mm. How do you take this whole politicization of the armed forces, as you called it, yeah. but also the misuse of the armed forces name for election electoral benefits? After all, whatever the armed forces does, it does in the name of the president. Yeah. And it does in the name of the country. It doesn't do it on behalf of the political party. Yeah. To take those actions which have been taken on behalf of the country and make it as if it's a political party which is in charge of the army or armed forces. <coughs> How do you take this whole issue? Uh, if you remember, Prabhi, we did a show here post Pulwama and uh, we started talking about the politicization. But to my mind, this entire um, exercise is an attempt by the BJP, and I'm naming the BJP here, and Narendra Modi ji, to blur the lines between the government and the political party. It is here where the danger lies. When the government takes strong actions against terrorists or any hits on our serving armed forces, the government is well within its right to talk about it, to declare it to the press, to hold press conferences. But it is not the same when you take it to the electoral stage and rallies and ask for votes based on the actions that has been done. This sort of a thing has never happened in the past 70 years. Um, I was there in military operations directed when Kargil happened. Uh, we haven't seen Vajpayee ji doing it. Before that, I'm saying I was too, too young then to realize what uh, Indra Gandhi ji did or otherwise. But definitely during Vajpayee ji's time, I was when the entire Kargil, this sort of a thing never happened. This is a serious threat to democracy, involving the armed forces in for demanding votes and um, politicizing the defense forces. We consider it as a threat, absolutely to our country. 
you know, the bigger threat is mm. if the armed forces is politicized, that the armed forces in a number of countries have taken over the politics. And that's a longer threat that you, the bigger threat the country carries, there was the, this kind of short-sighted policies. Pakistan and China both have political armies. China is completely political. It is subservient to the party. party. Pakistan, the armed forces control the government. Do we want a situation like that in our country? Isn't that a threat to democracy? I mean, I would have thought that this is something in the 60s was discussed. If you remember, there's a military coup in Pakistan after which this kind of discussion took place in India also. And both the armed forces and the political establishment have actually been very cautious of this count to see that they don't politicize the armed forces, armed forces do not directly come into politics. This is the now, shall we say, the Chinese wall being breached. It is not breached yet, it's just an attempt. The armed forces ethos and traditions of the Indian army are very strong. You don't they're think that will, they'll be able to no, stand up? No, I this. don't think uh, they, that sort of a breach will ever happen. But any attempt to do so only undermines the institution. We and can't afford, if we do not step up and stand for what is correct, then we are just uh, on a slippery downhill path. And the fact that the retired officers have stepped up is basically giving voice to what the serving officers can't say. In we are in very close touch uh, with the serving fraternity. They can't speak because their right to, the freedom of speech is abrogated. It is for us to step up and uh, spell out our concerns. We've been doing this uh, for the last four or five years. You know about it, or uh, degradation, uh, cantonment roads. We have had many shows right here in this uh, on room. These yeah, on all these issues. touch upon yeah. the armed forces. But we do not ever talk about operational matters. Major Chaudhary, there's also the other issue that has come up. You have been active in your other capacities, also the chit fund issues, the fact that people, chit funds have betrayed the people, run away with the money, and so on. Now, in this, there are also charges against you that, as a, as a part of that, you are political. So, how do you respond to that? <laughs> Prabir, uh, if I'll just take you back four years on 14th of August, 2015. If Narendra Modi ji and BJP had not lati charged us, I assure you I would have been in a corporate somewhere and not doing any of this. I don't enjoy the heat and the, this thing or the pavement as much as a, I like my... That is charged on who? On the veterans and gentlemen. Veterans and gentlemen. But that was, that was something which came to us as a rude, rude surprise. And thereafter the constant lies on OROP that is still going on, oh, well, it uh, angers us, anguishes us, is the very least uh, that I can say. Fact of the devotions of the armed yeah. forces seniors in the list of the uh, <laughs> no so let me complete let me complete this um, so BJP post the this thing say uh, after the entire uh, hue and cry and the country stood behind us had gave out a pension enhancement we call it a pension enhancement and not or up and they sought to take advantage of it and by launching a massive PR campaign and social media campaign saying that or up they are we bold and they also sought to divide a fraternity, which they almost, to some extent they succeeded. What we did as a counter is we sought to unite the country behind us and tell the truth. So to that extent, when they sought to divide, we stepped up and asked the country. We fought for the country. Now the country will fight for us. We must, we owe it to the country to tell them the truth. Therefore, we tied up with the, the Kisans first. The, last year, the series of Kisan marches that happened. Jai Jawan Jai Kisan is not limited to a slogan anymore, it is percolated down to the ground. We aligned with secular forces and uh, around issues of the people rather than focusing on any political party or any political leader. As an exercise, uh, as a spin-off of that entire exercise, we did a nine-day agitation called India Unites, in, starting from January 30th this year. Forty-odd organizations uh, came, to came together to say that focus around people's issues rather than political issues of whatever. One of those organizations was the Chit Fund, the PACL, AISO, uh, who, AISO which is very active in doing this. We held massive rally, 40,000 people on the streets on that day, came from everywhere spending their own money. So I'm the national coordinator of that. And we had, from 2015 we have been saying, we will punish you if you do not address our issues and the time for punishment is now. We have consolidated those votes. I'm being absolutely clear. We have written to the president 
about not politicizing the armed forces. In a democracy, we as veterans and as citizens have a role to play. We are playing that role. In a democracy, the after, only way you can act... After all, retired officers are in the cabinet. So therefore, <laughs> they are also... It's a, <laughs> that's a different issue altogether. The, let's put this once and for all. We are political creatures. But we are not into electoral politics. We are a pressure group. We will continue to build the pressure and make sure that the political costs of not addressing our issues mount. Not now, even in you the know, future. The last question. There have been a lot of questions, a lot of, shall we say, taking credit for the full Obama or taking credit for surgical strikes, air mm. strikes. But when you come to serving army men or you talk to the BSF Jawans or you talk to the CRP, uh, CRPF okay. Jawans, there is a huge complaint regarding food, regarding their basic amenities and so on. If you remember, yeah. we they, 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 they said Russian money being uh, dropped, table, taken out, whatever. Partic particularly yeah. in the air for the armed forces, there is also this issue about the ration money. Yeah. So what is the issue of re read the ration money, which I believe has now been withdrawn? Yeah, has been, been withdrawn, withdrawn and the rates are very low. Uh, what does it really mean? It means that earlier. Um, uh, all serving armed forces personnel were issued rations on a certain scale for to maintain the uh, diet and uh, considering the climatic conditions. There's a lot of scientific thought that had gone behind it. Presumably because of budget constraints, the government thought it fit to withdraw the um, ration money and, and is giving, I think, 96 rupees, if I'm not wrong, per day, which doesn't amount to, is not enough. For, so when there was a hue and cry about this, talk about the Javans being able to fight. Yeah. Food is important. Food is extremely important. But when the uh, when the veterans again stepped up and said that this is wrong, then the government passed an order saying that this is applicable only in uh, peace areas rather than in the field. The field, the uh, armed forces personnel continue to draw rations. So that is one issue. But uh, there are but a the series. The majority of the armed forces are in peace areas. Well, I am not in a position to say where the what percentage is because I don't have the data right up, uh, right with me. But suffice to say that there are many, many other issues also. This is just one. Degradation, cantonment road, uh, NFU, OROP, there are a series of that. On one hand, the BJP and the government um, claim to be nationalistic and for the armed forces. On the other hand, oh. these things keep on mounting. So the essential issue is to claim the credit, but not to address the problems. Well, <laughs> well on that note, yeah. and hope that, you know, some of the issues you have addressed will be, uh, some of the issues that you talked about will be addressed, and we hope the Indian people at least will listen to what you are saying. Thank you very much, Thank Major Priyadar Shibi, for being with us, and hope that we see you again on this and other issues. This is all the time we have for News Click. Thank you very much for watching News Click. Do come and visit our website as well.